Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're creating a detailed game ready axe. In this lesson we'll be taking our ambient occlusion and cavity map, combining them together into the color of our principled BSDF ready for texture painting. If you like what you see here then check out the description for my website and playlist section of my channel for other free courses. Or you can follow the links to my character course where you can learn to make a full game ready detailed character from scratch. Also you can check out my new drawing course Learn to draw creating game art, links in the description. Okay, so here's where we got to last time and I'm now in the shading workspace and I've set my axe up one side and my shader editor up the other side. And you can change around the views by middle clicking on here and joining the areas or splitting them up. And I recommend this layout for this particular axe. So if I zoom in a touch, we've got the normal map, which we've baked. That won't be changing so I can minimize that and that so it doesn't kind of distract. It's going to the normal map there and the metallic, that won't be changing, so that's going in there. But the cavity and the ambient occlusion, we need to kind of mix together into our color. Now for this, you will want the Node Wrangler enabled, so if I go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, type in Node, and tick the Node Wrangler, make sure that's enabled. You can then close this down, and now we get a few options like Control shift left click on an object, and we can see the results of that map in the viewport. So it's actually going up to a viewer node which is an emission of one. So here's the ambient occlusion, control shift left click. Here's the cavity, control shift left click. And we want to blend them together into control shift left click, our principled BSDF. And at the moment, it's just got a base color of white, but it looks slightly different there because that's metallic and this is dielectric. Okay, so how do we mix these together? Well, we need a mix RGB node. You can go shift A to add color mix RGB, or if I escape from that, you can control shift right click and click and drag between the two and it will mix them together. I'll maximize that and bring it up to here. At the moment it's not doing much, one because it's not plugged into our principled BSDF, but also it's just mixing the two together. I'll press Control shift left click on the mix node so we can see the results of that mix and I'll talk a little bit about what the mix node does. If we bring it to the front, so zero, that will bring in the top color input. This one will bring in the bottom. So there's the cavity, there's the ambient occlusion, and we've got a mix of the two sort of blended together. However, you've also got blending modes up the top here. Now in order to show you this, I'll just unplug this one. So at the moment, it's mixing our cavity with this white color just here. So if I bring this up, we see the cavity. If I bring it down, we just see that slightly white color. However, if I change the blend mode, and I'm going to change it to something called overlay, that will take the light bits of this and make the gray lighter, and the dark bits of this and make it darker. So if I start to bring it up now, you see it brings in those dark bits and light bits. And if I change this to let's say blue, you can see it's overlaying the blue color. So if I bring the factor down, it's all blue. Bring the factor up, it's still blue, but it has the effect of the overlay. If I change this to mix and bring this down to 50%, it's got the white color coming through of the cavity. And we don't want that. We only want it to be influencing the color with an overlay blend mode. As you can see, we've got that sort of darkness and lightness coming through. Now it might seem a touch confusing to start off with, but it will make much more sense when we get a texture in here. So let's put in a texture just for an example. So shift A to add, texture, and I'll bring in a wave texture and plug it in. So that's what the wave texture looks like. And you can see, as I bring this mix down, it just looks like the wave texture. But as I bring it up, we can see some of the influence of the cavity map there. So with a blend mode, it doesn't destroy the textures, it adds to them or influences them. Okay, so I'll unplug the wave texture and I'll turn this back to white. Okay, I'll put this over here for now. We want to hook up the ambient occlusion though as well. So in order to do that, I can copy my overlay node. So Shift D and I'll change it back to mix as if we've just added a mix shader. And this goes into the bottom once again. So we can use it as a blend mode and this one will go into the top. So this is how you stack them together like this. So for now we'll concentrate on the ambient occlusion, so I'll control shift left click on that. So we're just seeing the results of these two. So how does the ambient occlusion work? Well at the moment we're just seeing the ambient occlusion because it's on a factor of one. And if I bring it down, we just see the gray or the light gray there. And there's a mix between the two. So if I change this to the blue color, we see a mix between the two. I'll undo that and I'll plug my wave texture in there and we're seeing a mix between the two. There's our wave, and there's our ambient occlusion. 
But as soon as I change this across to one of the darken modes, like color burn, multiply, or darken, multiply is the best one to use, so I'll use that. It uses the ambient occlusion and darkens it. So you can see, here's what it looks like with mix at 50%, and here's what it looks like with multiply. So we still keep the original wave texture, we just influence it with this blending mode. And if I pull that all the way up to one, we've got that ambient occlusion there influencing our wave texture. So we've got our ambient occlusion, then we want our overlay on top of that. So I can control shift left click on our overlay, and there's the results of the overlay and the ambient occlusion together on the top, influencing our wave texture. And then let's bring that into the principle of BSDF, control shift left click on that, and there's the results in its entirety. Let's bring that roughness back now. So we can paint a texture over here, so I'll delete this one, and we'd paint a texture here and plug it into the color. So whatever we put in here, it will be influenced with the ambient occlusion and the cavity. I'll turn that back to our light gray again. So hopefully that's explained the cavity and the ambient occlusion and how you hook them up into the color and work with a painted texture, which we'll set up next time. So quick reminder, the ambient occlusion we use as a multiply blend mode and the cavity we use as an overlay blend mode. And the blend modes are all found in here, and this is a mix RGB node. As some of you have pointed out, I haven't actually done my Tauruses down here. I might put those in, I might not, we'll wait and see. A big thank you to those that watch an advert and to those that donate. It's much appreciated, makes a big difference to the channel. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.